Hi, welcome back to Brooks's Bass Corner. Today, this Status Graphite Empathy 4 string bass is going to get a service and some TLC, and much needed as well. Uh, so while we're at the workbench, let's get down to it. So before we get down to business, here are some of the tools and products I'm going to be using on this Empathy bass. There's a Hercules neck cradle, some WD-40 spray for cleaning and conditioning the phenolic fingerboard, some cut-up t-shirt rags for cleaning the fingerboard with, a Music Nomad microfiber suede polishing cloth, and a separate all-purpose Music Nomad flannel polishing cloth for initially cleaning the base. I have a set of Music Nomad grip guards for cleaning and polishing the frets, some new Procell industrial 9 volt batteries for the circuit and LEDs, a set of brand new Rotosound SM66 swing bass steel round wound strings, a Hosco 400 fret eraser for cleaning the frets, and then a selection of Dunlop cleaning and polishing products and the ever useful Never Dull for making the frets really shine. And last but not least, I'm using the Music Nomad work mat. Welcome to Brooks's Bass Corner. It's been a while since I've done a workshop video, but now that gigs and shows are a regular thing again, my basses need some attention. Hope you're all safe and well out there. Before I do anything, I need to get the black nitrile gloves on to save my hands and fingers. I need to safeguard the digits in order to do the gigs. So this is my own personal status graphite empathy four string bass. It was made in 1998, but I bought it brand new in 2002 from a music store in West London that had received three untouched empathy bases, either from Status directly or through a distributor or a retailer, all in their cases. I plumped for this one, and the rest is history. It hasn't been restrung since 2019, so before the pandemic hit, and it's going to have a complete clean-up today. The setup, action, intonation and pickup height have been very stable since I last set it up to how I like it back in 2007. The bridge has been locked in place ever since. Hasn't really moved and because it's a graphite neck with no truss rod the neck relief is kind of set. It is what it is. Here we are in 2022 so it wouldn't hurt to check it all anyway. There's some marking and checking here at the base of the neck through general playing and string plucking shenanigans. It is a status after all. I was going to use some of this, Meguiar's Scratched Times 2, which is usually for car bodywork, but I want to see how this patch comes up using the Dunlop Body Gloss 65 Cream of Carnuba Wax. I want to see how this works and how it performs, so the Meguiar's Wax will have to wait for another day in another video. So it's going to get complete clean. I'm going to do the gloss work. Clean the frets so that they shine again. Clean the fingerboard. Tighten everything up. Change the batteries. And generally give it an overhaul and a bit of a service. I have a feeling that the string height, pickup height and intonation won't need any adjustments. But we'll see when we get to that part of the proceedings. So let's get on with it. The strings are off, so time to replace the batteries. Using a Bosch XO rechargeable screwdriver, which has served me very well over the years, I'm going to be using Duracell Procell industrial 9 volt batteries. I have Sims LEDs in this base, which were installed in 2002. If you're wondering why this card shim is in here, it's because 9 volt batteries tend to be sized a little differently, and usually they move about in the battery cavity. At one point the LEDs would change brightness of their own accord and what was happening was that the contacts were moving on and off the battery connector. So in order to keep them steady and secure in the cavity I use a piece of folded card and it seems to work and keep the batteries in place. So let's just check they're working. Yes they are. One job done. I hope you're all safe and well out there. Thank you for all the comments and suggestions, all the video likes and the subscriptions. It is all very much appreciated, so thank you very much. I haven't done any workshop videos for a long time, so the only way I've been able to talk to you fine people out there in YouTube land is through the live chat videos. We're currently on live chat 18. 
and Live Chat 19 takes place on Monday the 1st of August 2022 at 8pm UK time. I'll place a link in the description box, but you can ask for a notification by finding the video stream link in the upcoming videos list and clicking on the set notification reminder button and YouTube will send you a reminder on the day. If you'd like to hang out and join in, then you are more than welcome. We talk about bases, gear, effects, bands, our favourite players, content on the channel, bass albums, in fact anything bass related. That's the circuit batteries done. We're going to use a Music Nomad all-purpose flannel polishing cloth. This bass has really earned its money over the years, so it's due a bit of love after many a hot and sweaty gig. Time to clean the bass up and get all of the gunk and dirt and rubbish off and see where we are. Time to remove all the grot and grime, dead skin from playing since it was last cleaned up. So it is well due a good spruce up. This bass has done thousands of gigs. It was my main bass for many years with one of my old covers bands. We tuned the semitone down and this bass held its tuning and general stability a lot better than some of my wooden neck basses. It's all coming along. So we're going to use some Dunlop guitar cleaning and polishing spray with the polishing cloth to clean the bass up. I'm sure if I could hear this bass talk it would be giving out a sigh of relief. It's already starting to look a whole lot better. Next thing I'm going to do is clean the frets, remove all the tarnish and get them sparkling again. So I'm going to use these Music Nomad grip guards. I've heard good things about them. So rather than me masking up the fingerboard, which takes way too long based on the time I have today, I'm going to use these. You may notice some wear and tear on the phenolic fingerboard where the strings have ground away some of the material that's happened over time and without skimming the board there's not a lot I can do other than apply the WD-40 to bring back some of the shine and luster. So I'll be doing that after the frets are sparkling again. I'm going to use a Hosco fret eraser from Japan bought as part of a set from Amazon. This is a 400 grit eraser which is a little less aggressive and abrasive than the 150 and 180 erasers but it should clean these frets up a treat. As far as I can recall, I've never cleaned the fret since 2002. That's cleaned up the frets, now time to use some Neverdull. If you haven't come across this before, it's a lubricated wadding for polishing metal and brass. I'm going to use that guard again and polish the frets up, being careful not to get any on the fingerboard. Wait until you see the colour of the wadding after I've used it on the frets. They'll look even better in a moment when I wipe them down. That's better, they're looking a whole lot better now. The fingerboard is quite marked and not the lusty black it would have been when it left the Status Graphite factory, but it will do shortly. So I'm going to tighten everything up, check that it's all secure. So you don't use any chemicals to clean the fingerboard, no polishes or silicon based products according to Rob Green at Status, the man who built this. You just use some WD-40. Going to use an old rag, a piece of an old t-shirt spray it on the rag and then apply it to the fingerboard and that is already looking a whole lot better this has had regular fingerboard cleaning over the years but it's clearly built up over time so it's getting some looking after today so if you have a phenolic board equipped status this is how you clean it up thankfully it is my grot no one else's, which is another reason for wearing the gloves. 
If there's anything you'd like to see on the channel or anything you'd like to ask, you can comment on individual videos or contact me via the community tab here on YouTube, or you can contact the channel via social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you send me a message, I'll try to reply as quick as I can. It won't always be immediately, as I may be out on gigs. There, that fingerboard is now looking healthier and happier. A quick wipe over the body, and we're going to try and improve this area of swirling and scratching between the neck and the neck pickup using the cream of Carnuba wax. So I'm going to use some of this Dunlop Body Gloss 65 Cream of Carnuba Wax, front and back. Basically, we wipe this onto the base until it looks like a hazy film over the surface. Leave it for between 30 to 60 seconds, then polish the base with the Music Nomad suede polishing cloth. Let's see how we go with it. I could have taped up the neck, pickups and hardware, but I haven't. <laughs> but for the sake of time, let's see how we go. If I don't get the result I'm after, I'll try some of the Meguiar's product next time I restring the base. It might hinge on the polishing after the wax has done its thing, so we're going to use this Music Nomad Super Soft Microfiber Suede Polishing Cloth and see how this works. Hopefully you can see what is happening as I go through the polish layer. Looks pretty damn good so far. The area around the pickups is looking better. So here we go, let's see if the wax has performed. Well. It's looking pretty good. It's less dried out and battered than it did. It's restored the shine. Look at that. It still has various dings and bangs as it has been in the trenches, this thing. And it has performed admirably. Wow, I'm really pleased with that. Okay, turn the base over. Go to the back of the base and we're repeating the process. So we're gonna use the guitar polish and cleaner again. Give it a good clean up. It's been resting against my body for many gigs, so it certainly deserves it. And the back of the neck can do with some cleaning as well. Hopefully you can see the weave and the graphite neck, which looks like snake scales. And some wax to look after it too. Should be enough. Rub it in. And I'll leave that on for a minute or two before I polish it off with the suede polishing cloth. So now we wait. The wax is on and doing its stuff. It's suede polishing cloth time again and giving the neck a rub down and clean. The wax really works, the red becomes far more vibrant. I'm really impressed with this. That's not bad, not bad at all. It won't fix all the scratches and dings but it's a lot better than it was. Okay, going to use the flannel polishing cloth to clean up the pickups and although there is only so much I can do with that, I'm going to use some of this cleaning spray again. I can't remove the wear but I can make them look a little better. Okay, time for a restring. So we have a set of Rotosound SM66 swing bass round round steel strings, 4000 gauge which is my preferred gauge on this bass. So watching me restring a bass is pretty dull, so we're going to zoom through this. But before we do, quick shout out to Jason Howe and the crew at Rotosound headquarters here in the UK. Thank you for the fabulous strings guys and all the channel support, it really is very much appreciated. Okay, time to tune her up using my old faithful Boss TU2 chromatic tuner. We're going for concert pitch, so now we're going to stretch the strings in, put them under tension. They will go out of tune. Tune them up and do it again. And then do it again for all of the strings. So the idea is to get the slackness out of the string before you play. Doing this on gigs as well before you play is a good idea. So let's plug it in and test it. All the controls are working fine. Let's 
play it for a second and check that it feels and sounds okay. Just checking for some buzzing across all four strings. As expected, it all feels great, and I doubt I'll need to make any adjustments to the action. Give the strings another stretch, because it'll be a few days before I get to use this bass on the first gig of this experimental run. So this bass is set up how I set it up back in 2007. The bridge has been locked in place ever since. The action hasn't shifted, nothing has changed in that time. The official status website has measurements and specifications for string height and pickup height, which you'll see on the left hand side of the screen, but for those who are listening only, the details say the following. So the distance between the bottom of the G string and the 24th fret should be around 3mm, 3.5mm for the D string, 4mm for the A string, and 4.5mm for the E string. But all of these are open to interpretation based on the strings you're using, how you play, and the tone you want to achieve. So using this string measurement ruler, let's see what we've got. Okay, we've got three millimeters for the G, between three and three and a half millimeters for the D, four millimeters for the A, and four millimeters for the E string, but I can live with that. Okay, for the pickup height, the bridge pickup should have a distance of four to five millimeters between the bottom of the string and the top of the pickup, and between six and seven millimeters for the neck pickup. So here on my bass, okay, the low E string is bang on at five millimeters at the bridge pickup, and the low E is smack bang on six millimeters on the neck pickup, which is about perfect. So the measurements are fine, so let's have a play and see where we're at. There's a little bit of buzz, and I've had that on most of my status basses, but you don't want the action too high, as it will just be hard work to play. Okay, it's all good. I'm very happy with that, as it hasn't changed in 15 years. Okay, quickly check the intonation, tune, then check at the 12th fret, D string, retune, D string is in, A string, yeah that's in, E string, it's hitting between the green light and the first red light so I'd say we're okay with that. Okay I'm going to mark these strings up as this bass is going to be used for a series of videos to see how long this set of rote sound strings will last, up to the point that they completely lose their tone, tuning stability, or they snap and break. So I'm going to mark them up at the red silk ends on the headstock with black pen and then you'll see with each video update that they are the same strings. So I'm going to put these two black bands on each string wrap and you've watched me do it on this video so over the coming weeks you will see these black marks on these strings. So there you go. What do you think? Is that getting the vote? Let me know what you think via the comments below. Leave any comments or questions you might have and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. So there we have a cleaned, set up, status graphite empathy four string bass. Cleaned up, checked over and looking fabulous. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and you enjoy the other content on the channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell and give the video a thumbs up as it really helps to push the channel along. Also, feel free to hit the super thanks icon below the video, which allows you to contribute or donate to the channel if you enjoyed this video. Links to products I've used in this video will be listed in the description box below. Look forward to seeing you next time here on Brooks's Bass Corner. Look after yourselves and take it easy. Bye for now.